Now, the investigation that we just went through uh, is an example of verifying the sum and difference identities for sine and cosine. We use specific angles to see that this pattern did work and made, we verified that the left side equals the right side. So it suggests that it's true. It doesn't prove that this is true. Uh, the proof of these identities can be found here. But these are the sum and difference identities for sine and cosine. And it says that the sine of two angles added together, the sine of that sum, is equal to the sine of the first angle times the cos of the second angle plus cos of the first angle times sine of the second angle. And you can see the patterns here for addition and subtraction of angles for sine. And there's also identities for cosine as well. Now the sum and difference identities for sine and cosine can be used to then develop sum and difference identities for tangent. Let's take a look at this work. So we're here to show that the left side here, tan of one angle plus another, is equal to tan of the first angle plus tan of the second angle, all over top of one minus tan of the first angle times tan of the second angle. Now the difference here is that we're not going to be using specific angles for A and B. And in that case, because we keep it general, we can actually prove using the sum and difference identities for sine and cosine that this left side equals the right side. And because we didn't use specific angles, we can prove that it's true for any two angles that are added together. Now we're going to divide the numerator and denominator by cos A cos B, where cos A is not equal to zero and cos B is not equal to zero. Now just by the definition here, if we start with the left side, where tan is the addition, we're taking the tangent of a sum of two angles, then we know by definition that the tangent ratio is sine over cosine. So the tangent of this whole piece is going to be the sine of that piece divided by the cosine of that piece. And then we continue and say, well, since we have the sine of a sum of angles here, we can use the identity formula that we had uh, previously, is that that is equal to the sine of the first times the cosine of the second plus cos of the first times sine of the second. And of course, using the identity for cosine, the cosine of this sum is going to be equal to cos of the first angle times the cos of the second angle minus sine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. So we take the top and divide it by cos A cos B, and we take the bottom and divide it by cos A cos B. So you can see that both the top, the numerator is divided by cos A cos B, and the denominator is also divided by cos A cos B. So let's continue our work and distribute this denominator here to each of these terms. So we have sine A cos B divided by this cos A cos B. And then here with the addition, so this added to, we have cos A sine B divided by, again, this cos A and cos B. Now what you'll notice is that you have, so that's all over top of cos A, cos B, and that's divided by cos A, cos B, cos A, cos B. And then the minus sign, which is right here, is this minus sign. And we're gonna have sine A, sine B, and that's over top of cos A and cos B. All right, well, let's take a look at things that we can put together here. So if we take a look at the top piece, we have this sine A over cos A. So sine A over cos A is just tan A, right? This is tan A. And then cos B, here, if we have cos B over cos B, that part here, cos B over cos B is just one, okay? And then if we look at the next piece, we have cos A, over cos A, that's just one. And then also we have sine B over cos B. Well, what is sine B over cos B? Well, that is actually, that's equal to tan B. That's over top and of this bottom piece. And let's take a look at the bottom piece. So if we were to take a look at the bottom, we can see that we have cos A over cos A. And we also have cos B over cos B. So this is actually just one times one. And then we subtract the subtraction sign here is this the same subtraction sign. And then if we look at this sine A over cos A, that's tan A. And then for the other piece, 
we have sine b over cos b. So that's just tan b. So it seems that if we put everything together, this is going to be equal to tan a plus tan b divided by 1 minus tan a tan b. And that is what tan of a plus b is equal to. Let's use a similar process then to find out what tan of a minus b equals. Here we have tan of a minus b. Now we're going to use the definition of what tan a minus b is. So tan a minus b is going to be sine of a minus b, and that's going to be divided by cosine of a minus b. Just the definition of tan is tan is sine over cos. So using the identity formula for the sum for or sorry for the difference in sine, then here we have sine of a cos of b minus cos of a and then sine of b. That's the identity formula. And on the bottom, we use the identity formula for cosine, and we have cos of a cos of b. And then it's plus cos, sorry, sine of a sine of b. Now we're using the same procedure as we did before. We're going to actually multiply, uh, sorry, divide each the top and the bottom by cos a cos b. So it's going to extend into some compound fraction here. So here we have we have our sine of a cos b minus cos a sine b, and that's going to be divided by our cos a minus cos b, so cos a cos b. And then on the bottom, we also have the same thing. So we have our cos a cos b plus sine a sine b, and that's divided by uh, cos a cos b. When we do that, we're going to think of this as sine a cos b, and that's over top of cos a cos b, and then that's subtracting cos a sine b, so that's over cos a cos b, and of course, you still have that whole compound of the denominator here, so this is equal to cos a cos b all over cos a cos b. And then we have a plus sign, which is that same plus sign there. And we have sine a sine b divided by cos a cos b. Okay, so now we need all our different colors so that we can see what's happening here. So this part here is going to be equal to our tan a. And then cos b over cos b, this part is equal to 1. And then if we subtract, we have cos a over cos a. So that's 1. But then we also have this sine b over cos b. So that's equal to tan b. And then if we, so on the bottom, we have our cos a over cos a. We also have cos b over cos b. So this is just 1 times 1 on the bottom. And then, of course, we have our plus sign that's here. And then we can see on the bottom here, this is sine a over cos a. Well, that's just tan a. And sine b over cos b. So that's tan b. So now we have this formula that's equal to tan a minus b. And we so this is equal to, then I know I'm going to the left here, but this is going to be tan a minus tan b over top of 1 plus tan a tan b. And that's the formula that is equal to tan of a minus b. And those two formulas are right down here. So you have tan a plus b is equal to tan a plus tan b all over top of 1 minus tan a tan b. We have tan a minus b is equal to tan a minus tan b all over 1 plus tan a tan b.